Hey everybody, it's Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, and we're gonna do kettlebell class outside in a little bit. So go through a quick Q&A, but I wanted to tell you guys about a conversation I had with a woman yesterday who I train. She's a new newer client and she asked to do a one-on-one -on -one nutritional consult with me. So I just talked to her yesterday on the phone for a minute just to get some um, prerequisite information before I meet with her. I just wanted to find out what was going on. And she's telling me no matter what she does, she can't lose weight. This is sort of the same old story. You know, three years ago, she was 120. Now she's 145 pounds. She can't figure out what's happening. Turns out she's postmenopausal. And in the conversation, um, one of the things that came out was that she's very prone to kidney stones. So one of the things I obviously talked about was when you go through menopause, the change in hormones and, and managing hormones is one of those things in that black box that we've talked about in your body that is so important to, to weight loss and managing weight. And there's ways to optimize hormones. And you guys are learning that, uh, how sleep and exercise and all these things really matter. And so, you know, breath work, the, everything that we're, we're doing has an effect on hormones. And the older you get, the more important this becomes. And understanding that becomes very important. And, and after this, I'm going to talk about testosterone in a minute because that got brought up as well. But check this out. The reason why I bring up the kidney stone thing is because in the source, of the, in the excuse me, in the course of the conversation, I recognized that how much we do that I've been professing for years manages not just kidney stones but almost everything that you can think of to not get. Right, in order to be healthy. So kidney stones can be, cal most of them are um, calcium oxalate. Some of them are uric acid based. Um, so I think it's like 80% of them are, are calcium oxalate stones or three quarters, something like that. But regardless of, of what form of stone it is, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll be, you'll hear things like, oh, you know, you can't have, uh, you can't have oxalates. You can't, um, uh, you know, drink tea and all these things, which are high oxalate foods. You shouldn't have salt. You shouldn't have animal meat. This stuff is, guys, that's like telling somebody who's overweight to stop eating. That's like, you know, telling the sugar junkie to stop, to stop eating sugar. It's much better to understand how these things work and how, you know, if you're prone to kidney stones, how to mitigate these problems by understanding what's actually happening in the body. So real simple, guys. You wanna manage kidney stones, do the things we've talked about. Number one, make sure you drink a heck of a lot of water. Um, diluting the body with water is a phenomenal way to help uh, prevent any stone, whether it's uric acid-based or calcium-based. Number two is you cook the foods that are high in oxalates. So foods that are high in oxalates, if you cook it, heat destroys a lot of oxalates. Number three, when you supplement with magnesium, mag most magnesium supplements are magnesium citrate. So you know, you, I sell magnesium citrate on the shelf. The only time I'm gonna tell you to take a different form is if you have trouble sleeping. So magnesium glyconate or magnesium theonate, I'll tell you to take at night but even the magnesium itself will help block oxalates, but the citrate itself will certainly help block oxalates. So if you're having foods that are high in oxalate, which is almost every food, having you know 50 milligrams of, of a magnesium citrate is a good practice, or just squeeze some lemon into your water, which we've talked about in the past, right? We've, we've gone through that in previous 40 day challenges, how beneficial just squeezing some lemon into your water is for overall health. Uh, so yes, you should not drink a whole lot of water during your meals, but mostly between your meals. But this is a situation where if you're prone to kidney stones, four ounces of water, squeeze a half a lemon into the water and drink it with your with your food. That citrate will help mitigate the, uh, the damage um, that's possible there from, from the oxalates. So the other thing, guys, is that when you look at the foods that are high in oxalates, there's also other things that, not just citrate, that block, and magnesium that block the oxalate, right? Calcium, 
and uh, potassium. Uh, there, there are things that complete that compete with the oxalates that um, that stop them from becoming a problem. So when you look at nature, yes, spinach is super high in oxalate, but it's also super high in calcium, and that's why after you eat spinach, well, people will say, well, you know, spinach is so high in calcium. No, the bioavailability is low because of the oxalate. So they cancel out each other. So just because something's super high in oxalate and super high in calcium doesn't mean that they're bad for you. Nature has a way of balancing these things out. So if you're relying on spinach, for example, to get your calcium because you read how much calcium it has, you're not, the bioavailability is almost zero because the oxalate is blocking the calcium. Yes, I know it sounds complicated, but that's why I'm explaining to you guys. If you learn a lifestyle, right? If you recognize, oh, this is why nutrients are important. Supplement with my vitamin D3 with K2. And by the way, vitamin K2 is also super critical to take the calcium out of the bloodstream and put it into the um, bones where it belongs, right? That's where it belongs. That's another way to manage kidney stones. Amazing, right? If you, if you, if you recognize that what I'm asking people to do over time, and, you know, including things like, you know, reduce your sugar, um, increase your protein, you know, you're going to notice that that's going to start to manage your insulin status, which is one of the biggest drivers for what kind of stones? Those are your uric acid stones. If you're type two diabetic, you're gonna be way more prone to uric acid stones. So guys, hydrate, get your citrate, whether it's through your magnesium citrate or squeezing some lemon, um, make sure that you're cooking your high oxalate foods, um, making sure that you recognize there's, there's ways to to get around these things. The most obvious elephant in the room, guys, for most people is hydration and proper supplementation. Um, and then the other issue, talking about testosterone, it is shocking to me how many men, uh, including in this group, have been talking to me about testosterone or testosterone therapy. And guys, so, as soon as you start to manage hormones productions in your body, you have to understand that you're going to shut down your body's own ability to create that hormone. So if you start down the, the path of a hormone therapy, this is for men or women, you're going to stop the endogenous process of your body's ability to create those hormones. And it's not without consequence. So with testosterone, for example, m most men, are testosterone deficient because they don't sleep enough. They don't, they're overweight. So being overweight is one of the, by the way, when it comes to um, kidney stones, being overweight is one of the, the strongest correlations of why people get kidney stones is because they need to lose weight. But uh, if you wanna inhibit testosterone production, you, diminish your sleep, you gain weight, and you don't sleep enough. That is those, and you drink alcohol. Those are the ways to uh, inhibit your testosterone production and you don't exercise. If all of a sudden you start getting enough sleep, if you start eating correctly, lose some weight, you start exercising, especially strength training, you stop drinking the alcohol, you'll be shocked at what happens to your testosterone the thing the other thing that antagonizes testosterone very strongly is cortisol it is cortisol now hear me out guys it is cortisol that antagonizes cortisol uh, excuse me uh, testosterone that would come from stress and you may say well geez how do i manage stress well there's a lot of things that we've talked about with breath work and you know, how, how to create sleep hygiene practices in order for you to fall asleep, but whatever. The other thing to think about, guys, is when you start taking testosterone, you now inhibit your body's ability to create that cortisol. Well, you may say, well, that's a good thing, right? No, 
because one of the consequences of testosterone, high testosterone in the body, higher testosterone in the body, because that's one of the things that men start to do. They start to take testosterone therapy via a cream and they think, wow, you know, more is better. No, because one of the consequences is joint pain. That joint pain is there. Why? Because it is cortisol that is the strongest anti-inflammatory your body makes and you're inhibiting that. Okay, so the video is getting a little long. I didn't want it to be this long, but I just wanted you guys to recognize that via the things that we're asking you to do, you can be a healthy person without even having to think about all of the problems that come along. You just follow a lifestyle and you don't have to think about kidney stones or testosterone therapy or anything else. You just follow along and everything falls into place, all right? I challenge you guys to find one situation where practices I've asked you guys to do over the course of 20 years creates a problem instead of solves a problem. Have a good day, everybody.